good, good afternoon students. So in weeks two, three, and four, you're, you're going to have a three-part assignment, part one, part two, part three. And the writing assignment is located underneath your forum. And so here, what you're going to do in weeks two, three, and four is you're going to be constructing an annotated bibliography. What is an annotated bibliography? An annotated bibliography is a list of references that have a summary after it. Annotated bibliographies are a useful way for a researcher to keep track of their sources, especially if they are writing a long research paper. For weeks two, three, and four, for your reading response essay, you will be building an annotated bibliography for that essay. How is an annotated bibliography different from references? Well, the references that you wrote, the, li the references list that you wrote at the end of your paper in ENGL 101 is simply a list of reference citations at the end of your paper without summaries. But an annotated bibliography is a list of reference citations at the end of your paper with summaries. Here is an example of an annotated bibliography. And so here you notice that I wrote in, um, in a APA format. And so here you got to italicize, which I forgot to do. All right, so I got to italicize the. So you have your the last name. So in here is a refer APA reference citation. Last name of the author first, then the first name, then then a, then a period, then dot, uh, then your date. Okay, and and the article has to be from within the last ten years. Then you write the name of the article and you italicize it. And then you write where you got the article from. So here you would write the journal, the name of the journal, the name of the publication, the name of the publication company, or the name of the website. So here in this case, I, I wrote Center for Disease Control website, the CDC. And then if it's from a website, you would have retrieved December 28, 2022 from http www.cdc.gov. And then you write your um, your summary. Now, if you are writing, if 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 the article is a peer-reviewed journal, then you are going to be using the abstract uh, formulation in which you would write the purpose of the article, uh, the methods, the results, and the conclusion. If the article is not a scientific uh, study, then just write the main idea of what was the article about. All right. But in, the, in any case, the reason why we have an annotated bibliography is so that the researcher can keep track of all of his sources, so that when the researcher finishes researching, let's say he has 55 sources, then he sits down to write his paper, then he can look through his annotated bibliography, and then he can choose which source to put into his body paragraphs. So that an annotated bibliography acts like, a, like an index card of what your sources were about, in which you read, you read an article and then you summarize it. You read another article and then you summarize it. And it's, it's a way of keeping record of what you researched for your paper. So that's actually the purpose of an annotated bibliography. And so what you're going to do is for, for your week two assignment, you're just going to, um, and so here you have your, your uh, article, the citation, and then here you would write, in this article, Adams talks about how obese America has gotten. The purpose of this article is to show the seriousness of obesity in the U.S. The methods used for this research is that the scientists measured the overall body mass index of Americans today for, and then compared it with the body mass index of Americans 20 years ago. The, the next, so, so first you write methods, the, the purpose, methods, and now the results. The results from this study show that on average American, Americans today are on average 20 pounds heavier than they were 20 years ago. And then you would write the conclusion is what application do these results have for everyday life and what other uh, research needs to be done. And you would write the conclusion of this study shows that Americans need to diet more, eat smaller food portions to lose weight. 
So your abstract, if you're, if you're summarizing a scientific study or if you're, if you're summarizing a peer-reviewed article, so your abstract will include the background, the purpose, methods, results, and conclusion. Jones, James, the effectiveness of a keto diet. And once again, I forgot to um, italicize. You, you always italicize the, um, the, the, the title. So you have the, the author, the date, the name of the, um, the title of the article, the name of the website or publication, date that you retrieved it, either from the database or, uh, so here you would say retrieved from, and then you would, you don't have, you can, if you got it from a database, you just say retrieved from um, the, the uh, I can't remember any big databases, oh, re retrieved from the ERIC uh, database or something like that. In this article, Jones shows the effectiveness and the ineffectiveness of the keto diet to help people lose weight. The purpose of this study is to show whether or not keto dieting helps people lose weight. Methods included using a control group of people who did not go on a diet but went on a Mediterranean diet for about two weeks. Then they compared it with another group of people who went on a keto diet for two weeks to see which group lost weight more. And the results show that the keto group of people who did the keto diet lost more weight than the people who were on the Mediterranean diet. So this means, and then the conclusion is what implications do the results have on everyday life. So the conclusion you can draw is that the keto diet is a much more effective diet to lose weight than the Mediterranean diet. So everybody should go on the keto diet to lose weight. And so that is how you write uh, the summary if you're doing a peer-reviewed article. If you're just doing a regular article that's not peer-reviewed and it's not a scientific study, then you would just write just like, the, just like you would see the summary, the back of a book, okay, or the, or the back cover of a book. You would, you would write about, in this article, uh, Jones writes about uh, how fat everyone has gotten in the last 25 years and how now uh, they, people have to make larger coffins, larger tables, uh, larger like restaurant seat tables, like seats. Everything has to be larger because everybody has gotten fatter and bigger. And, it's not, and, and being obese is a serious problem in the United States, something like that. So if it's not a scientific study and it's just an article about obesity, then you just write about what the main idea of that article is in your summary. If your article is a scientific study, then you have to write in your abstract or in your summary. Your abs this is an abstract, by the way. Just so it's your abstract, it's your summary of the article. Then you would write using your summary would include background, purpose, methods, results, and conclusion. Basically, you're going to summarize what the background was. You're going to summarize what was the purpose of that article. You're going to summarize what methods that researcher used. You're going to summarize what the results in that article was, and then you're going to summarize the conclusion, and then it should be no longer than one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines or seven lines. It should be about a paragraph. So your your summary should be no longer than this. Okay. Then if you, if it's if it's if it's any longer than that, then it's not a summary anymore, right? The whole purpose of a summary is to summarize it in a concise manner, sort of like an index card. Okay. So that's this is what you're annotated, and you're going to find. Um, more than two. Uh, and then when you do a re reference list, so when you have a reference list, you simply have a reference list like you did for your second, pers like your second essay, in your persuasive essay in your English 101 class, in which I just write Adams, John, and once again, I forgot all the, um, yeah, that's, that was, uh, it, interestingly, when I did my master's, it was, I actually forgot to underline. Back then, you had to underline all of the um, all of the article names and I remember my professor saying you've got 88 sources and you forgot to underline each and every article name so I had to go back through 88 pages over a hundred uh, reference citation I spent the whole night underlining each and every article so I still I still make that mistake except these days we don't underline anymore we italicize the article name and it's interesting that I still forget and make the same mistake Anyway, how do I know whether or not to use, a, to use references or to use an, 
annotated bibliography at the end of my paper assignment. Ask your instructor. Look at the assignment directions because those directions and your instructor will tell you which one is required for your paper. Now, for weeks two, three, and four, you're not actually going to be writing a paper. You're just going to be constructing an annotated bibliography. So in week two, part one, you're just going to find three credible sources from either the, from either the APU online library or from Google Scholar. Then you're going to, dis then you're going to describe how you found, found these credible, credible sources, and you're going to tell us what database you used, and tell us why you chose your topic. So your topic should be a topic that's related to your major. If you don't have a major yet, then you can look up a topic from procon.org. Okay? So then you summarize the three credible sources, and then you uh, use APA for formatting for your reference citation, double space your paper, use Times New Roman, size 12, and use left hanging indent. In other words, uh, this is how your assignment should look, except you're going to have three of these, and then you're going to answer, you're going to be answering a bunch of questions like, um, I chose these three credible sources for my education major because I'm going to become a teacher. So I decided to choose uh, bilingual education uh, articles about biling bilingual education because I'm going to be an ESL teacher, that sort of thing. So you're going to tell me, and uh, you, you're st still going to summarize your two articles, and then you're going to answer a bunch of questions about why you chose those articles. That's it. So that's your week two, part one. And then what I'm going to do is I will correct Let's say someone is missing parts of their reference citation. I'll make corrections. And then when you go to part two in week three, you are going to include these three, uh, the, the three sources that you got from uh, week two. And then week three, you're going to continue finding sources for the same topic you chose last week. But you're going to find four more sources. So two of those, uh, two of those sources are going to be peer-reviewed articles from either Google Scholar or from the APU online library. Now this week, week two, you didn't have to find any peer-reviewed articles. All you had to do was find three credible sources. And we use Kapow. Current, C for Kapow. A, it's written by an expert author. P, purpose, it's not an ad. O, objective and W, writing style is professional. That's how you tell that something is credible. So using Kapow, you're going to find three credible sources for the part one assignment. Then part two, you're going to go into the library and find uh, four more sources, and two of which are going to be peer-reviewed uh, sources. Now, when you go to the APU library, I'm sure they have a video on that. They, when, you, when you put in the search word, Let's say um, you're looking for education, bilingual education. There should be a little checkbox that asks for you, do you want to find peer-reviewed articles or do you just want to find regular articles? In other words, they're filters. You just check the box that says peer-reviewed articles. That's it. Then when you press search, then the APU library will then search for only peer-reviewed articles. So I know that they have that video under the review section of your Moodle classroom. So I didn't make a, so that's why I didn't make a video of it. So basically that's what you're going to do is the only difference from the, this one to this one is you're going to have four sources. You're going to add four more sources to the three sources you already have. So by the end of part two, you're going to have a total of seven sources. Okay. I know this sounds really confusing and later on I will provide, um, I will provide a uh, sample of what it looks like because I know everybody's visual you know so it's kind of it, it will look just like this it will still where did it go oh it will still look like this except there's gonna be seven of these one two three four five six seven it's gonna be seven looking like this okay so basically it will still look like this your assignment it's just gonna be longer okay you're gonna have seven of these and, and they're going to be from the library, they're going to be, and you're going to build on this. So then still here, I just have two, two samples. You're going to have seven. That's the only difference. And it's going to look just like this. So don't freak out saying, oh, I don't know how to do this. This is so confusing. You know, just, just, just a seven of these and that's it. It's, it's that simple. Okay. So then, um, and so basically, and you're going to double space it, which 
Obviously, I didn't do that here. Here, I didn't double space it, and I didn't do left hanging indent. So it's supposed to look like, hold on, let me see. Hold on. It's, yes, your, you're going to have seven sources that look exactly like this. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to be double spaced, left hanging indent. It's got the summary in there. Although this person did a really long one. You don't have to make one that long. One short, a five lines, six lines, that's good enough. But anyway, so it's something like this, okay? You got the author's name, the date, then this is the name of the um, name of, of the um, article, and then here you have the public publishing company, so that means this was a book, okay? And so on and so forth. And then here you have the same thing, okay? Here you have the, the, the author's name, the date, the article name, and then you have the name of the journal, and, and then what edition, you know, journal number 34, uh, 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 number 3, pages 321 to 335. Okay, so after you write your reference citation, then you write your, your summary. Okay, except you're going to have seven of these. Okay, this is going to look exactly like this, but seven of them. Rules, rules, rules. And so here, if you want to uh, find the official uh, APA manual, you should buy your own APA manual from the APA.org website. This one's a little out of date, should be seventh edition, okay? And then these are the rules, you know, you've got to have Times New Roman and so on and so forth. Each paragraph should be indented and so on and so forth. And so that's basically, you know, what I didn't do. And then for week four, you're going to just simply make any corrections because I will give you feedback on any corrections you have to make. And then all you have to do is just include the, the teacher feedback, just like you did in your English 101, uh, one, part one, part two, part three, when I would give you feedback, except in those days, I was teaching you essay structure and I gave you templates to follow. And I, I said stuff like, your thesis statement needs to be the last sentence, whatever, you know, and then you fixed your paper. Well, same thing here. If you, whatever mistakes you make, you made in two and three, I will give you feedback. Then you're going to include all those corrections. And in the end, you're going to have seven sources. So all you're going to do for the week three, part three, is just write the seven sources. And now you know how to do a, an annotated bibliography for an APA paper. And so this is, uh, so this video is for uh, your part one, part two, and part three assignment for weeks two, three, and four. And so if you have any questions, feel free to email me.